This is what the orchids that were mounted on cork in the summer of 2023 looked like in the September update. A full 13 months later, Orchid Ninja Samurai Nina's son asked for an update and wow how time flies. I can't believe it's been over a year already anyway. Welcome to the patio and the update on the orchids that I mounted on cork after having them on an inorganic mount since 2020. My inorganic mount comprised of a plastic support which came out of a sandwich container and instead of sphagnum moss I use a filter that is suitable for AC units or extractor fans above the stove. In order to not have to destroy too many roots I kept a lot of the original inorganic structure in place and just secured that to the cork. This ensured that the orchid would not suffer any setback. Instead, as you will see, the orchids just continued trucking on as if nothing had happened because nothing did happen as I refused to remove the structure they were previously on. I admit that I was a little put off by the unnatural look, but it didn't take long for me to get used to it. And after all, I am a huge proponent of the roots come first and we can work on the aesthetics as time goes by. At some point, the roots or moss will cover the white plastic and with others, I will be chipping the plastic off when and where I can. In that way, eventually, it will be minimal. Right, we are going to follow the same order as we did back in September of 2023, with the exception of two orchids that I'm going to add on at the end. So I do not have comparison footage for them. Still, one has performed exceptionally well and the other I'm a lot concerned about. Anywho, this is Dendrobium cerauna. Now she was not on an inorganic mount. Instead, she was sawn off the same mount my Ephilim is on. All I did was just add the cork. It was on to a new piece of cork, but many of its roots stayed behind on the Ephilim mount. And with that, it did suffer serious setback. Enter thrips, which were an issue during the summer of 2023 and 2024, but it is now pushing out new growth yet again. It did bloom really nicely this summer, but I took the blooms off to give it a rest. I'm happy with the progress, but you see this one had major root disturbance and it was weakened, which I avoided by leaving my inorganic structures on the other ones, as you can see here on the Dendrobium unicum. This one, wow. Finally, it is growing a second new growth, for the first time since I have this orchid. At the beginning of the season, I was hoping for two new growths this year, but I thought two new growths at the same time, not while one was still growing. <laughs> I'm not being picky, but I had already settled for a single growth yet again. And here we are, ta-da! How big that one will grow remains to be seen as we are now in that time of year. The first new growth though is already 30% longer than last year's and still has not reached its terminal leaf. It is going to hopefully be another great bloom show in 2025. So if you would like to be around for that, please subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you here. Thank you. Brassavola tuberculata has my mind blown because I did not expect it to grow growths of this caliber. Here we are, the first season of it being placed on the cork and well, it would appear to really like it. It also bloomed for the first time this year, which gave me the opportunity to get all the tags where they belong on all my Brassavola species, everything sorted out now. And because I got four back in the day and they all looked somewhat similar, there was a tag switcheroo back in 2018. Anyway, it's all sorted out and we're looking at tuberculata and it's not done yet. There are two more new growths on the way, which I'm not going to be able to push to their max again because of the winter season coming up. Still, every new growth, no matter the size, will produce roots and with that, the orchid gets stronger. I mounted my Phalaenopsis pulchra last year as well and she has grown like weed status. It's so much fun to watch an orchid that should be difficult to grow in my conditions do what she is doing or has done so far. We have another keiki on the way on a spike that got bent to oblivion by birdies using them as a perch. Yes, both spikes were taken out. We also have a new basal keiki that is coming through the hop filter material, which I have cut open to allow for the leaves to now emerge. All that being said, I'm just loving this orchid and if all the keikis make it, I shall have four pulchras. <laughs> one of those will bloom one day, I hope. <laughs> the lava burst, the lava burst. Well, this one's going to be short and sweet, 
it is doing great ever since it pulled through being mounted on the scrubby pad. A genius suggestion from Michael McCarthy when I mentioned the EpiWeb was too expensive back in the day. Well, the rest is history and she has bloomed three times since September 2023 and is now in the process of growing her next spike with a new growth on the way as well. Anyway, 2024 has been her best spikes season ever since she was rescued. Podangus dactyloceras continues to be a bit of a problem child. During the summer, I could spray her down entirely, trying to keep up with her high humidity needs, but this is now another challenging winter for her, and all I can say is watch this space to find out if she's going to make it. I'm fighting hard for her. I don't want to lose her, but I'm very apprehensive about her future in the collection. So, with that being said, send a lot of thumbs up by way of liking the video so that this orchid will feel the positive energy and know that she is well and truly wanted. I would really appreciate that. She did bloom during the summer but I did not document the spikes because I took them off prematurely to allow her to focus on staying as strong as she possibly can. I have another single root showing. How on earth am I going to hydrate that when it goes aerial? Well, first of all, I am going to have to get it to even keep growing so there's that big sigh. Dendrobium serratilabium was another dendrobium that got sawn off the aphyllum mount just like the serraula and also suffered setback but she is making a wonderful comeback with amazing flushes of blooms. I have a feeling she's catching up from the blooms that I took off of her last year. <laughs> I am hopeful that from here on in, she's just going to grow from strength to strength. And I'm allowing her to bloom out as per her own timing, because she appears to be strong enough to handle this crazy abundant spectacle. Dendrobium exilia was also on a kitchen pots and pans scrubby pad and that was wired to the cork. The hardest orchid to document and take proper footage of, so I apologize for the wishy-washy filming. But I can explain what you may not be able to see clearly. She grew seven new growths in 2024, extended all of her existing canes, she had an attempt of spider mites doing more damage but I stopped those in their tracks, and is now blooming like I've never seen before. This is her best blooming ever. I tried to get images early evening at one point because the blooms are so tiny and of such a pure white that even a little overcast day will blow out the color and the camera can't find the blooms to actually focus in on them properly when standing a distance or close up. It can be breezy. It's a thing. As you can see, a green background camouflages the orchid and a white background camouflages the bloom. So <laughs> I hope that you can see how well she is doing with what I tried to capture. It really is a shame that I cannot make the camera do something so that you can see what I actually see for real. But she's doing great and that is the most important thing. My Dendrobium bensonii. Well, this orchid defoliated a couple of weeks prematurely from what she normally does and that is because of a spider mite infestation. While I got rid of them in true dendrobium fashion, she had had enough and thought might as well go dormant and be done with the season and I don't blame her. Thankfully her nine new growths of the season are all 30% longer than those of the previous year and the terminal leaf had already appeared while I was trying to rid her of the spider mites. So for that reason, I'm not phased. I have not lost out on the full growth potential of the canes and now we can anticipate her vanilla scented blooms around June 2025. It has been a blast seeing her root system gobble up the scrubby pad inorganic mount section that she was attached to the cork with. Another season of roots like these and it will be hardly noticeable anymore. Same with Dendrobium polyanthum. While the roots are not the ones covering the inorganic mount piece, this year moss has decided to make its home on it, creating a wonderful disguise. This orchid has gone bananas with new growths and spider mites tried and failed. I had war paint on in the portico when I took to the Bensonia and this orchid. Thankfully, this one still has all the leaves. While there's a little damage to them, she is still in active growth and there is no sign of premature leaf drop. So <laughs> I'm very thankful that she can still continue to grow the canes as she needs to and in her own timing drop the leaves, not prematurely like the Bensonia. 
and yikes when it comes to Dendrobium Victoria Regina. While she was not scorched by the sun on the big burn day, the dry intense heat scorched most of her leaves and they dropped very quickly. To the point she was behaving like a deciduous orchid, which she is not. We had another scorched day late September, which affected the tip of the leaves of her new growths, but I am pleased that she is pushing so many new growths and trying to branch from other canes, it's all good. While she doesn't look as lush as she did in spring, I'm not worried about her. All I did with her was mount her original mount onto a new piece of cork, and now the moss is moving to the new piece, and it's starting to look nice again. I'm still waiting to see if any roots will make their move onto the new cork, and time will tell. With all the rain we have had, she is in her element this time of year, and she really deserves these conditions considering that she had a bit of a struggle this past summer. My twinkle also got hit hard during the Scorchio day. All the leaf tip burn you see is heat scorch, not sunburn. But with four spikes on the go, honestly, hakuna matata. <laughs> Let's just say, considering her state when she was mounted, the fact that she survived at all borders on a miracle that only happens on occasions with orchids. You can see that I used a little bit of hop filter material at the base of the structures to simulate sphagnum moss, and it worked a treat. Watch the space for a pretty little blooming with scorched leaves as a backdrop. This is something you will only see on this channel. <laughs> And here is my Brassavola perinii. And well, you can see the whole structure of the previous mount. I just plonked this orchid on this XXL size piece of cork because I'm not fussing around with Brassavola roots. The fact that she was even put on this mount with the least bit of interference had her pull a strop in 2023. Hardly any new growth and no blooms either, clearly signaling her disapproval of having been disturbed. Anyway, until 2024, and she is now going nuts. I have not counted all the new growths. There are too many, and there are still more on the way. I mean, they won't amount to much because, again, the season, blah de blah but talk about a complete turnaround in growth explosion compared to last year. I guess this orchid also had some catching up to do. In addition to that, the size of the growths are insane. Double from what she used to grow in comparison to previous years. I have so enjoyed watching this orchid find the cork, and if I had known the size potential of the tubacolata, trust that I would have had that one on a ridiculous out of proportion mount size as well. Because those roots are just growing long and out of the back end of the mount, instead of curling the mount to attach. Ugh. Anyway, this is what I love to see, the perinei with the roots actually finding the mount. While many aren't, some are, and those are the ones I celebrate. I also enjoyed seeing the structures so nice and green. Now that the angle of the sun is reaching her, she is going to go reddish brown. She won't look as lush. She'll look a little bit more toasted, but trust me, it's just anthocyanin because she will eventually get full-on winter sun. Anyway, looks aren't everything when it comes to some orchids. Progress, though, is. <laughs> Speaking of progress, my cat Lyacerna. Well, I'm still apprehensive about her. She's not plumping up even though I have some new growths. It's just a painfully slow process watching her in the hopes that she will recover. For a moment there during the summer, I thought I saw her perk up a little bit, but the Scorchio days set her back even though she wasn't in full sun ever. I'm hoping that there is more than one or two new roots that I can see going on to the mount. I'm not fussing with her to try and find out. <laughs> I'm just hoping that one day suddenly she's all nice and perky and plump again. There won't be any Cernua blooms on the patio, even if she tries to bloom. I shall be nipping those in the bud, literally. Anyway, fingers crossed, this is just an extended setback period and she will come out of her sulk phase mid to late winter. Again, subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you around for that. And we're going to continue to think positively, but any changes will be documented, analyzed, and used as teachable moments. Trust that. Before I wrap this up, I do want to mention though that since the cork mounts came to the patio, I have had some new scents from wood weevils and instead of one carpenter bee checking out the patio and not finding anything, last season it did find one cork mount and this season I have had two of them drilling holes in the back of the mounts to lay their eggs. This is something I really did not want to encourage, so while the orchids have done great, 
These two kinds of visitors, they are not welcome. And with that, know what you may be getting into when using cork for your orchids. You may be inviting some kind of intruder that is going to make it a little bit like, ah, stay away from my mounts. You know, that kind of a situation. <laughs> Anyway, I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Of course, if you have any questions or something you would like to bring to my attention, even if it doesn't correspond to this video, please make the comments section work in your favor. Thank you, Orchid Ninja Samurai Nina-san, for the request. I hope this update met expectations. Thank you also for watching. I wish you the most fabulous of days, on the condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.